And there we go. Okay. <laughs> Whew, so shadows in the glass. Damn. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> That was an improvement. Yeah. <laughs> that is how you uh, that is how you integrate a backstory into the overall plot. <laughs> like that was a fucking fantastic episode. Yeah. That was fucking fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god, there is a lot to talk about here. I mean, yeah. oh my god, I I I called it. I fucking called it when they they uh, I think it was episode four when the Kingpin first showed. I was like, I can tell right now this is gonna be one of the most interesting Marvel villains they've ever made in like any in, in the cinematic universe, and I was fucking right. This yeah. character, I am fascinated by this character, and like it, Daredevil's barely in this fucking episode. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, like and it's it's pretty much all about uh, Wilson Fisk and like his tragic backstory, but it's 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 real with cliches, but at the same time it's done so fucking well that you don't yeah. really care. Woo, okay. <laughs> it's like they pretty much found like any complaint I had in the previous episode. It's like, oh, so you mean something like this? Yes! <laughs> it's amazing! <laughs> <laughs> well, like I said, I think the last episode was a lot like set up for like yeah. future episodes. This one is like, it's it's very much like a self contained episode where it's like, it, yeah. it drives the plot forward, but it's also uh, very much self contained as well. Yeah. If that makes sense. But. Yeah, like, th this can stand on its own as its own piece, but just, like, it does, like, help with the overall picture. Just, like, mm -hmm. it better illuminates the villain, like, to kind of explain, you know, make him much more sympathetic while explaining his motivations. Mm -hmm. Um, just, they found a really <coughs> pretty good child actor, which, wow. Um, and when they, the way they explore his past is just, dear God! Yeah, like, there's a lot of great, uh, explanation, exposition and stuff I give yeah. this episode. Uh, and really, we're going to talk about full spoilers here, obviously, uh, but, like, basically what happens is, as a kid, Wilson Fisk's dad run, ran for a uh, councilman, but he did so by taking a loan from, assumingly, some kind of gang member, but it all went south, obviously, and uh, he had to try to get his loan, but the problem is his dad's a complete asshole, so yeah. he He's... frequently belittles his son, tells him to toughen up. Yeah, basically, he cut... He... As I mentioned while we were watching, he kind of comes off as like a Tony Soprano character. Yeah, kind of. Even though I never watched Soprano, so that, yeah. I was too young at the time. Yeah, I still opinion. need to see it myself. But it's just from what I have seen of it, mm -hmm. it's, he has very similar personality. He kind of looks like him too. So yeah. yeah, like you say, he played by that actor if he was still alive. But yeah, um, but like basically, it's the whole I'm gonna toughen you up by making you do all these horrible things, blah blah yeah. blah, blah, and treating you like shit. Until eventually at the end when he's forced to stare at the wall, which looks like the pain he bought, which I thought was a great little tie-in. Yeah. Uh, which tells you a lot of, like, deep character shit, which I want to talk about. Because, like, again, there was a lot of shit to talk about this character. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, where's it going with this? Oh, yeah. Base. So then, like, uh, his wife says, uh, starts giving shit about uh, the loan he took and how it was a bad idea. So she he starts beating her with a belt. Yeah. And then... Wilson Fisk, obviously t tired of hearing this, grabs a hammer. <laughs> yeah, he snaps. He, yeah, grabs a hammer and basically caves his skull in all while shouting something that his father was. Yeah, he says, uh, kick him again, which is what he's told, yeah, uh, to what his this. dad told, encouraged him to do to someone else he knocked down. Yeah. Uh, which kind of, yeah, there's a lot to fucking say about this episode. Like, it even starts out but I, I, I love how this show is willing to try new shit. Like, yeah. I just love how this show is, like, try, it keeps trying new things. I love that. And, uh, in particular, it starts off with, like, Wilson Fisk's morning routine. So he gets up he, with a horrible nightmare, usually. Makes himself an omelet. Stares at the paint on the wall. And then, like, gets dressed and all that stuff. When he looks in the mirror, you see just this bloody child staring back at him. And I'm like, oh, that's fucking brilliant visual. Uh, yeah. And, like, it just, it does a great job. Like, it uh, basically... Right off the bat, tells you more about him without saying too much, like leaving you wondering. It. I mean, you honestly could have left it at that, and you would have like had tons of speculation in the backstory. I mean, that honestly, yeah. like, told a whole story in five seconds. Yeah. Uh, <coughs> but they do expound, expand, and it does expand like what he said in earlier episodes, like uh, like again when they first introduced Wilson Fisk in the series, he says uh, he's looking at that one pane that looks like the wall in his house, which you now know. Yeah. And he says, how's the pain make you feel? It says it makes you feel lonely. And I was like, oh, that really ties in yeah. well. I was like, that's... Also, they explain the cufflinks a lot better. Yeah, the cufflinks his dad wore. <laughs> yeah, the one to, quote-unquote, honor him. But it really just reminded him that 
to not become his father. Really, it's like, you gotta imagine the kind of person that puts up a painting of that remind painting and wears cufflinks on a daily basis that reminds him of the worst thing he ever did as a kid. I know it's just God. He is such a fascinating villain. A guy that what did I say in the text to you earlier? A man who wants to own who wants to own the world because he feels so small without it. Yeah, and that's one thing I noticed. That's, that's particularly powerful in this episode too. Is the fact that uh, I'm sorry, my voice is still giving out. I apologize. Uh, I don't know how well you can hear it. I, I can hear it more, yeah. obviously. But, uh, yeah. is that basically a lot of the gang members are getting pretty pissed off because everything's gone to shit lately. Yeah. Naturally. And I noticed how... It, it's a lot of the way the actor plays it out. He's doing yeah. such a fucking great job in this role. Yeah. And it's the fact that he plays it like he feels small talking to these other, like, almost yeah. bigger personalities. That was ironic because he is a <coughs> fairly big dude. But despite this, yeah. he is very insecure and fearful of, like, the world around him mm -hmm. that he tries to fix, yet he doesn't... I wouldn't say it's not that he doesn't understand it, but it's like... No, I think he understands it yeah. fine. I yeah. think he's just intimidated by it. Yeah. Uh, like, even when he's talking, like, uh, what's the guy's name? Nabu? Uh, they... Oh, Nobu. Nobu, that was it. I like Nabu better. But, uh... I know, I know. <laughs> it's, it's, it's an immature joke. But... Yeah. <laughs> uh... When he's talking to Nobu, he he won't look him in the eye. Like, a, the kingpin won't look him in the eye. He's kind of looking down on the floor. Like, you know, it's like he's he's really just nervous, very shifty. Like, almost like, <laughs> again, he's like almost like a kid being talked down to by his dad. Yeah. And even with uh, Madame Gao at the, uh, towards the middle of the episode, who's smart enough to figure out where he lives, and also that he's multilingual. Yeah. And there's a lot of fun theories you can come up with that, too. Because uh, at first, like, before that point, I was kind of worried, it's like, Okay, so he's also really dependent on other people because he always has uh, what's Wesley? His name is yeah. He always has Wesley around. He's having these meetings. He always he always makes sure to keep him close because he considers him a friend and all that. But it's like, but he also uses him as like a translator. This is the first time it's like, oh no, it's all for show. He can speak Mandarin. He can't speak all these different languages except no one else has figured it out yet. So yeah. it's, my question is like, so how much of a fool is he really, and how much of a fool is he playing for them to think they have more power? Yeah. You can make a lot of fun arguments with that. So, really fascinating character. Yeah. And that's what it comes down to. I, mm, I love the direction to go with this. Uh, it makes me sad when I have, like, what, four episodes left? Uh, five. Five? Okay, cool. Nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. Yeah. Yeah, it's like, my God. man, they, They've really created something special here. Uh, this is, like, the part where, like, changes from the comic books that are really a good idea in the long run. Yeah, because Phil's... Philson. Uh, Wilson Fisk. Filson. Yeah. Filson Whisk. <laughs> yeah. Filson Whisk. That doesn't sound very intimidating. Sounds like a form of whiskey. Yeah. yeah. Or a, like an air freshener. <laughs> <laughs> try your uh, try your Filson Whisk today. <laughs> but, uh... Yeah. And so the funny thing is, like, also, this ties in the idea of, like, trying to expose him. Mm-hmm. But, oh yeah, they play into that a lot. Like that's like Daredevil's big storyline. This one yeah. is he. he fi they finally talk to Ben Urich, yeah, and says like, "Oh, you guys are going the wrong direction," which is you know what I've been saying since they started that whole storyline. Uh, here's the direction you want to look at, but just when they start like trying to expose Wilson Fisk on the daylight, he does it himself, which is like, okay, that's pretty cool actually. Yeah. So, uh, a few other things I noticed this time. This is the first time I realized that uh, the owls actually in this series, mm. which I did not realize until this episode. Uh, because, uh, what's the game name? Leslie... Leland Owlsley. Leland Owlsey. You ever yeah. notice the pun in his name? Yeah. yeah that's like old supervillain motto of, here is my villain name for later. Yeah. Basically. Uh, I don't know if he actually gets superpowers, but we'll see. I don't know. I, I, they probably won't. They probably won't. He's kind of, he's kind of like the vulture in the Spider-Man world, basically. Uh. <laughs> I'd be curious to see what happened if they did that way, but... Like... But even then, like, it also comes down to, like, a lot of the characters around can be very interesting, too. Like, Vanessa is also a very interesting character. Yeah. And I, I get... We don't know much about her, but you can tell it's just a huge dark side to her, Yeah, too. like, she comes across... It's like, I'm getting a Lannister vibe from her. A little bit! There is a little bit of a Lannister vibe there. Uh, just, like, she plays, like, a sweet, innocent art curator, but you can tell, like, she's perfectly okay with all this dark shit. Yeah. Like, does not start a fuss. Like, the only problem is if she lies, if you lie to her about it. That's really her only problem. Yeah. But, oh, God. This is such a good episode. <laughs> this is probably my favorite so far. Yeah. 
But uh, I've heard episode nine is pretty damn good too. So yeah, I don't know. Maybe we'll knock out one more before we call, like, call it a night. But yeah, sure. <laughs> uh, whew, yeah. I think it's. I mean, what else is there? Do you have anything else to talk about? Um, not much. I mean, this is just a great, you know, Fisk centric episode. Mm-hmm. I mean, just. As I said, like, I liked how they basically, like I said, any complaints from the last one, they, it's almost like they instinctively addressed it in this one. Yeah. In terms of, like, not what was presented, but how they presented it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, yeah, uh, like, even missing funny, crotchy old man, it's like, just, <coughs> oh, and, oh, what they did with the body afterwards. Oh, yeah. Oh, you know, oh, after oh. dad is dead, the mom walks up and goes, get us all. <laughs> and we're just like... And you can hear the grinding and all that shit. Again, yeah. I can't believe this show gets away with. That. Yeah. Uh, Thank you, Netflix. Yeah. <laughs> um, actually, what time is it right now? It's almost seven. Yep. If we're here right now, we can be down by eight. Yeah. All right. Fuck it. One more episode. All right. Yeah. Best one yet. We'll see when the next one tops it. <laughs>